our focus here, a big catch and error, nice strong base. Just focus on reactions, stay nice and uh, relaxed, nice and aggressive with our mindset. The catch it ramp, again, nice strong base, nice big catch and area. Cricket Last Story is with Minio Kagram. Today we're joined by John Simpson. Here at Lords, John, how's it all going? Yeah, good, thanks, Neil. How are you? Yeah, all good, thank you. So, John, you're going to give us a wicket keeping masterclass, some drills, tips for all budding keepers. Before we get into it, let's talk a little bit about your career to date. Just talk through how you actually got into the sport, your love of it at the start as a junior cricketer, and your path through the professional game. Yeah, so it sort of started from a pretty young age, really. Sort of, I had a, uh, my, my father played uh, England amateur cricket, was captain at Ramsbottom Cricket Club in the Lancashire League, and, um, you know, and sort of played for a long time. Um, and yeah, sort of then my grandpa, granddad all played, uncle played, so kind of cricket was in sort of my family blood, really. Um, yeah, and I just sort of grabbed hold of a little mini bat and whacked a few tennis balls and pool table balls around the clubhouse when I was young down at Ramsbottom and, um, and yeah sort of materialised from there really uh, but yeah all my family sort of been in sport whether that's sort of you know, I've got a, two, a, a great granddad and granddad who played rugby league for Great Britain dad played lacrosse for England so um, yeah I've been very fortunate and very blessed with, uh, blessed with some good genes so um, yeah sort of materialised from there really and um, you know that, I think the love of, of that sport um, you know really gripped me from a young age um, you know that team camaraderie um, you know I grew up sort of in the Langshire League so having that opportunity to sort of play against some of the best professional cricketers uh, in the world at uh, that period of time um, you know probably not as uh, good as, as back in my dad's day when sort of have like Alan Donald and Viv Richards and those guys but um, you know I was very uh, fortunate to sort of uh, you know, pit my wits at a young age against those guys and, uh, you know, I, I loved it from that minute and, um, you know, sort of 15, 16, sort of signed my first, um, you know, professional contract at Lancashire. It's, um, you know, sort of after a, an England under 15 tour and, and managed to go on an England under 19 trip over uh, that winter in 2000 and, sorry, I think it was about 2002, 2003. And my first trip was to India, so quite a... Um, you know, quite an interesting trip for a, for a young kid at 16 uh, years old, but uh, one uh, I thoroughly enjoyed and, and, and loved the experience. I think, um, you know, that trip, I think Joe Denley was on it, Moen Ali. Um, so obviously a lot of, um, you know, quite a few guys have gone on to play, um, you know, international cricket and, had, and, a, and a, few, a lot of guys who've had a, um, a fantastic career also. Um, but yeah, so from there, it sort of 2008, moved down to... Um, Moved down to Middlesex. Um, I was actually start. I actually moved down to uh, the young cricketers here um, under Clive Lar uh, Clive Radley's tutelage, which was, uh, you know, which was which was great. Um, you know, sort of allowed me to come down here and had a sort of a couple of months after being released uh, by Lancashire, and um, yeah, he recommended me to Middlesex and uh, Toby Radford, who was coach at the time, uh, had done a little bit of work with him. Um, you know, sort of in my junior career uh, at Loughborough through the England uh, age group setup, and uh, yeah, he was like, you know, come for a trial. So and then uh, Richard Scott phoned up, and um, kind of the rest is history, really. But uh, yeah, been quite an interesting journey, but one that I'll look back on, um, you know, very very fond of. So what's been the highlights for you so far in your middle sets career? Obviously, the championship. Must be up there. Yeah, absolutely. Incredible day. Uh, 2016 will uh, probably be the highlight of my career, um, you know, especially for Middlesex. Um, you know, that day, uh, that last day here against Yorkshire, uh, I think it was sort of 15, 20,000 people in at the end, which was, you know, an in incredible atmosphere, incredible sort of, um, I'm just trying to think of the word. <laughs> uh, well, incredible advert for, for county cricket, um, actually, uh, when you think of, you know, coming right down to that day four, um, you know, things can go one of three ways, really. Sort of, you know, if we drew, Somerset win the, the championship. If we lost, Yorkshire would. And obviously at the end, we, we managed to sneak a win. And, uh, you know, that was, uh, you know, it was incredible. And <laughs> the, uh, the, after, the after party was uh, pretty lively, that is for sure. I just remember pulling pints behind the, uh, the tavern and getting a, a bit of a telling off by Andy, who was actually the bar manager at the time. 
Um, but yeah, it was all, all, all good fun. But uh, outside of that, obviously making my international debut in 2021 was, was very special despite um, you know, the, the circumstances with COVID, etc. But um, that was kind of banned now. Nobody wants to speak about that anymore. Uh, but yeah, you know, those would probably be my sort of two highlights um, you know, of my career with Middlesex so far. We talk a bit deeper on your international debut, etc. The call up, the emotion wearing the three lines. Yeah, incredible. Um, you know, at 31 at the time, it wasn't sort of, um, you know, kind of expected really. Um, I actually turned 32 in the uh, game at Edgebaston, um, you know, which was the third ODI, um, which was obviously a fantastic win as well. Uh, to win that series 3 0, uh, like we did, was, um, yeah, it was incredible. It was obviously, incredibly special to be part of as well. Um, but yeah, like, as I said, you know, I guess at 31, you sort of think your sort of career is sort of not, you know, sort of. It kind of passed you, um, but but yeah, to go out there and put the three lines on to be presented my cap by David Milan was was very special. Um, obviously, a Middlesex teammate and, and very good friend of mine. Um, so yeah, um, that was yeah incredibly special, um, and, and and obviously to play an ODI here at Lords as well, uh, home ground, and have a lot of my very good friends, uh, you know, able to attend. Sadly, my parents couldn't get over from Spain, but um, yeah, it was an incredibly special moment. Where do you see the uh, the game overall going? Obviously, you've played um, in the hundred short form cricket. Obviously, you see the test, the current test team playing very expansively. If that's the correct word, <laughs> how do you see the game going? It's a great question, Neil. I think <laughs> I think if you've seen the last sort of you know sort of three to five years, um, you know the way test cricket's going, the way that the wide ball cricket's going. I mean, the game's moving at such a fast pace, so. Um, I'm not in particularly sure where this game's going to go, but um, you know, Test cricket was pretty exciting at the minute under uh, Stokesy and, and Brendan McCullum. So um, yeah, we've, it's hard to really predict, but you know, you start to see guys, you know, more and more guys being able to play 360. Seeing guys being able to bat left and right-handed, bowlers will probably end up bowling left and right-armed. Uh, you know, guys are able to throw left and right-handed, so. I mean, the game's moving at such a pace, not only the men's game, but also the women's game as well, isn't it? Um, you know, that's you know, moving at a, a, an incredible pace as well. Um, you know, the standard's getting higher and higher, and, um, you know, even, even for myself, it's, um, you know, you're always sort of trying to stay ahead, a step ahead of the, a lot of the younger guys coming throughout the game, uh, coming up in the game. And just, yeah, <laughs> it's hard to really predict where the game's going, but uh, one thing for sure, it's exciting, isn't it? And a word on your testimonial year 2023 with, with Middlesex, a word on that? Yeah, it's uh, yeah, incredibly special. Um, I was sort of saying to you before, you know, two, you know, when I started here in 2008, um, you know, 15 years later, if you said I'd been awarded a testimonial, I'd have, I'd have laughed at you. But um, yeah, obviously incredibly special moment, uh, you know, and, and something I'm very proud of uh, to be awarded a testimonial here at Middlesex. Um, it's been a lot of hard work. It's been pretty stressful, but um, you know I'm in, enjoying it, uh, and hopefully uh, it should be a, a really successful year. And hopefully I can get as many of the Middlesex members to the events as I can. And you know we've got some exciting events coming up um, throughout the year. So yeah, it's um, yeah, it's, it hopefully will be a special season both on and off the field. John, perfect. Can't wait to get into this wiki keeping masterclass. Let's go. So first thing we're going to do is a tennis ball, tennis racket. Neil's going to kindly hit some, some tennis balls uh, and all we're going to do here is he's going to hit uh, the tennis ball, just vary the length uh, and the lines. Uh, our focus here, a big catch and air, a nice strong base, um, you know, just moving with a line of the ball and just getting a nice, real lip, uh, nice rhythm uh, and staying really nice and relaxed. Uh, obviously with a tennis ball, if you're not, the ball will bounce out. So second drill we're going to do is with a crazy catch. Uh, Neil is going to be behind and he's just going to throw some balls. Uh, and here, just focus on reactions, stay nice and uh, relaxed, nice and aggressive with our mindset, big catching area, and just reacting to wherever the ball goes. Third drill we're going to go to is going to use the catch it ramp. Uh, Neil is going to feed some of the balls. Uh, and here, again, nice strong base, nice big catching area. Obviously, with a catch it ramp, it's got all the crazy little humps and bumps about it. So. Uh, here we're going to have a bit of a, a play around. And then one of my sort of signature drills is five on the spin, uh, quick fire 
catch and drop, uh, which basically take all the tension away from my uh, hands and arms uh, and just nice and relaxed with our mindset and I'll just let the body go. Big three things for me there are big catching area, strong base, uh, and then obviously reacting to whatever the ball um, goes. Uh, for, you know, for young kids, these are really good to keep developing reactions, like an aggressive mindset. And as I said, you know, big catching area, big strong base, uh, and then moving real quick.